All of us know the Italian Mafia from impressive movies and as a synonym for organized crime. But what is actually behind the mysterious Italian clans that have become great powers with criminal business? Find out the exciting secrets of the Italian Mafia in this video. The origins of the Mafia can be traced back to the Italian island of Sicily. Here in the early 19th century, feudalism still prevailed. This was a form of social organization in which wealthy barons with a lot of land holdings remained in control. They had their land cultivated by large tenants called gabalotti, who in turn employed armed guards, campieri or bravi. They were supposed to make sure that the peasants, the lowest link in the power pyramid, worked for their interests and thus also for the interests of the landlords. Early on, however, these guards used their position of power and their armaments to arbitrarily extort money from the peasants under their control. The Mafia's history took a decisive turn in 1861, when Italy was founded as a nation-state. In the process, the newly convened government did not succeed in controlling conditions in remote Sicily. Instead, the Gabalotti and Bravi succeeded in establishing themselves as armed rulers. Their strength was based on the fact that they joined forces in pursuit of common interests. They formed a parallel society that was partially recognized by the Sicilian society, to this day, this is one of the main characteristics of Mafia structures, and at the same time, also a factor that makes the Italian Mafia so powerful and influential. Gradually, the Gabalotti and Bravi also took over more and more state functions and penetrated deeply into police enforcement and jurisdiction. They oppressed the peasants and demanded high fees in the form of shares of the harvest. The peasants also had to pay for special protection, a practice that is still common today and is usually known as protection money. From 1890 to the middle of the 20th century, various organized mafia gangs formed in different areas in Italy. The forerunner was the Cosa Nostra in Sicily. The name means something like Our Cause and reflects how the mafia sees itself, as a closed network, as a state within a state. Their organization is characterized by a strict hierarchy with a pyramid-shaped structure. Those who are newly recruited have to start at the bottom and work their way up, step by step through performance and the building of trust. For better structuring, the Cosa Nostra got divided into different families, which are led by a boss, the so-called capo. The capo di capi, i.e. boss of the bosses, is the head of the criminal gang with about 5,000 members. The criminal activities of the Cosa Nostra mafia range from smuggling to arms dealing. In the 1960s, organized drug trafficking, especially heroin, was also added. However, the biggest source of income to this day is protection rackets. An unbelievable 70% of Sicilian entrepreneurs are affected by this and pay large sums to the Mafia so that they can provide them with protection and security. Numerous well-known films revolve around the organization and machinations of the Italian Mafia. The famous quote, The richest man is always the one who has the most powerful friends, from the iconic film The Godfather, shows the basic principles underlying the Mafia organization. In these organizations, everything revolves around contacts and positions of power. Only those who have the most powerful and influential mafiosi behind them can survive in the parallel society. In addition to the Cosa Nostra, the most influential Italian mafia gang at the time, other mafias also established themselves in Italy. In contrast to the Cosa Nostra, the Endragheta in Calabria is rather loosely organized and comprises a total of 150 clans. In addition to protection rackets and armed struggling, the illegal trade in cocaine is the mafia organization's main business. Today, Endragheta, which means manliness and heroism, is considered the largest mafia organization in the world, with an estimated turnover of an incredible 35 billion euros. The Camorra Mafia in Naples and Campania also formed in the early 20th century. Its economic sectors are the trade in counterfeit brand products, the construction industry, and drug trafficking. The Camorra also makes headlines with its recycling business. Heaps of toxic waste was dumped in their landfills, which is not only illegal, but also harms the environment and has severely contaminated the soil around Naples. The Mafia syndicates from Italy soon became international and expanded their business beyond the Italian borders. Almost parallel to the Sicilian Cosa Nostra, the U.S. Mafia emerged, which bears the same name due to the Sicilian origin of its founders. In the 1920s, a dense network of mafiosi formed in the USA. Their motive for action was, above all, fast money and the dream of wealth through criminal business. Whether illegal gambling, prostitution, drug trafficking, or alcohol smuggling during the time of prohibition, the American-Italian mafiosi used the entire range of dubious businesses to increase wealth and power. 
During the Second World War, which lasted from 1939 to 1945, the tide turned for the Italian Mafia. Its rapid rise was at least temporarily halted by the control policy of the fascist ruler, Benito Mussolini. Mussolini recognized the danger of the Mafia for his authoritarian state and actively suppressed it. However, after the fascist regime was defeated in the Second World War and Italy was captured by the Allies, the Mafia regained its former strength. It exploited the grievances of the people for its own interests, and even formed alliances with the Allies in order to regain its power. In the 1950s and 1960s, the Mafia's motive for action changed. Cold-blooded murderers who spread fear and terror became dubious businessmen who controlled illegal sectors of the economy, but also used the construction industry, which was booming due to reconstruction, for their goals. They also sealed collaborations with influential entrepreneurs and politicians in order to generate large revenues. In a court case, the Italian Prime Minister Giulio Andreotti, for example, was proven to have connections to the Mafia. The connections between the Mafia and politics was also crucial in the Sacco di Palermo, the plundering of Palermo. Here, during the decades after the end of the war, entire districts in Palermo were demolished and rebuilt under the influence of the Mafia. A small but significant Mafia group was formed in rural Puglia in the 1980s. The merger of two gangs creates the Sacra Corona Unita, which has about 1,800 members and is feared for its contacts with organized crime in Eastern Europe. Prostitution, drug trafficking, and the smuggling of illegal immigrants from Eastern Europe are the fields in which the Sacra Corona Unita operates. But the Italian Mafia is by no means a homogeneous organization. This became obvious in the famous Mafia Wars during the early 1980s, in which different clans from Italy fought each other. And even in 1984, the Mafia's greatest opponent came from within its own ranks. Due to a law passed shortly before, which guaranteed impunity to repentant key witnesses in court trials, the high-ranking mafioso Tommaso Busetta became the first pentito in Mafia history. In order to escape a prison sentence and obtain a new identity, he offered the justice system deep insights into the structures and general organization of the Italian Mafia. This marked the starting signal for a long struggle between the judiciary and the Mafia. Whereas previously almost all sentences against influential mafiosi had been overturned in the higher instances, the so-called Maxi Trials took place from 1986 to 1987, in which a total of 400 members of the Mafia were sentenced. The most famous of them, Luciano Ligio, the boss of the notorious Corleonesi clan, little impressed by the numerous sentences, the Mafia retaliated in the following years and brutally killed the high-ranking judges Falcone and Borsellino in 1992. To this day, the Mafia plays a cat-and-mouse game with the police, the Secret Service, and the judiciary. Sometimes powerful mafiosi, like Marcello Dell'Utri in 2010, can be arrested. In other cases, the string pullers manage to escape, go into hiding, and henceforth operate from the background, like the Cosa Nostra boss Matteo Messina Denaro. So the fight against organized crime in Italy remains a difficult one. Now it's your turn. What fascinates you most about the history and organization of the Italian Mafia? Feel free to tell us in the comments section and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on any exciting history videos. See you next time!